Happy Wisdom Wednesday, everyone. And this week's book of the week is actually not a book yet, actually. It's an ebook. This is the first ebook I've ever reviewed. But it was so good, I had to review this. I had to tell you guys about it. And the best part about it is that I'm leaving a link down below in the comments so you can actually download this. So the book of the week is called The Science of Scaling by Mark Roberge. And I know some of you recognize that name. That's because that's somebody whose book I did last year. And the book is The Sales Acceleration Formula. And just as a refresher, let me get that book for you. You didn't think I was gonna start 2021 without a little bit of internet magic, right? So Mark was the first chief revenue officer over there at HubSpot, and he wrote the book, The Sales Acceleration Formula, Using Data, Technology, and Inbound Selling to Go from Zero to 100 Million. And in this, he sort of outlines a framework specifically about how they used inbound selling, and more specifically, developing a framework for sales that helped them scale. Now, in the science of scaling, he took this framework and built on it. See, he went and actually uh, became a partner at the first uh, sales and marketing leader founded venture capital firm, Stage 2 Capital. And they put a number of their uh, uh, startups through this framework. And more specifically, what I like about this framework is the question that he asks. And I think a lot of great leaders start by asking very good questions. Now, he starts by asking this question in this graph. The Optimal area is obviously up and to the right. You have two paths as a startup. Option A, awesome retention and so-so revenue growth. Or option B, fantastic revenue growth, but not so good retention. Which path do you choose? Now, a lot of people say, oh, good retention, but most of the time when startups get started, they're focused so hard on revenue, and that's where a lot of mistakes happen. And the science of scaling really starts with this one section. Now, when it comes to scaling startups, especially SaaS companies, Mark came up with this three-phase system or framework in terms of how you should look about scaling the company. The first phase is the product market fit, where it's really focused on getting repeatable customer success and really good customer retention. More specifically, it's having consistent customer success. The second phase is the go-to-market fit, where you're not only generating customer success consistently, but you're doing it in a scalable way and you're starting to scale the company. And the third stage is growth mode, where essentially you're starting to scale, but you're having a more scientific and data heavy approach to defending your position in the market and scaling it. Now, the nice thing about this ebook is that he essentially breaks down each one of those stages with their own specific areas. But for the purpose of this video, I wanna focus on the first part, which is the product market fit and the three important areas that you gotta focus on. The goal of this phase is customer retention. That's a big, big focus of it. And your target market is one that I personally enjoy focusing on, which is early adopters. And the go-to-market strategy is really just win at all costs. Now, here's an interesting question. How do you know when you have product market fit? Like, what's the actual formula? Well, there is a formula that you can go with that you have to be very disciplined about arriving to the metrics on, but I really like this one. So you do have product market fit when you meet this criteria. Customer success leading indicator, whatever one you choose, is true if P percent of customers achieve E events within T time. So what are some examples of that? Well, we look at, at some really big and successful SaaS companies that define that very quickly. With Slack, 70% of customers sent 2,000 plus team messages within the first 30 days. With Dropbox, 85% of customers uploaded one file in one folder on one device within one hour. For HubSpot, 80% of their customers used five out of the 25 features in the platform within 60 days. Now, why is this important? Well, if you think about it as a company, you can go really hard at driving growth, right? And within a year have all this growth just from your revenue. But if you have high churn, right? And you're losing customers, you're not retaining them, you have problems with the product. You don't really have product market fit, right? You did a really good job of selling, but you don't do a good job of retaining them. And that's gonna be key when it comes to essentially scaling that revenue. Plus, the most important part is think about the type of customers you focus on. And, and here, Mark talks about the early adopters. So if you look at the early adopters, which come from Jeffrey Morris crossing the chasm, 
Let me remind you of that one. Now, reading directly from Jeff, Jeff Moore's book, early adopters, like innovators, buy into new product concepts very early in their life cycles, meaning they're willing to put up with the fact that your baby is ugly, right? They like that. They want to provide feedback into the product, give you insights. They will be brutally honest and tell you things that most people won't. But unlike innovators, which are really, really early on, they're not exactly technologists. Rather, they're people who find it easy to imagine, understand, and appreciate the benefits of a new technology and then relate these potential benefits to their other concerns. And whenever they find a strong match, early adopters are willing to base their buying decisions upon it. So because they're not uh, exactly the ones to rely on for well-established references in making these buying decisions, right? their preference instead is to rely on their intuition and their vision, right? And they're really a core to opening up to any high, uh, high tech market segment. Now, something to consider is that a lot of times with early adopters, people focus really on, get ready for this, adopters who are gonna drive revenue, right? That big fish, huge uh, company, right? The one that's gonna bring in a lot of revenue. But those aren't the ones that you want to use at this point in your product phase, right? Because you wanna have your product really tightened up for that. Because on one side, sure, a big name, a big account will help open up the market. But if you screw it up, right? Which will happen if you're early on the product market fit phase and you go for an account like that, they're also going to be a megaphone to the rest of the market to tell, tell them about how badly your product is and how much you screwed up. Now, for the most part, most companies don't have a problem identifying a leading indicator. One area that a lot of people have trouble identifying, according to Mark's research here, is that identifying that E, that event that is the leading indicator of success when it comes to customer retention, right? What is it? Is it when they set up the product? Is it when they use certain features? So figuring that out is super important, but most important to that is to make it very binary and as simple as possible, not overly complicated. Now, correlating this to the company's unique value proposition, this is what each team should be really focusing on. The go-to market team will be focused on driving leading indicator events in the new customer base. Marketing will be focused on driving awareness within the segments where the leading indicator achievement is easiest. Sales is gonna be focused on convincing prospects that the leading indicator events are most important. And the customer success team will be focusing on onboarding efforts on leading indicator event achievement. And if those events are aligned with the unique value proposition, you'll amass a very large and happy customer base. And if those events are aligned with your unique value proposition, you're going to amass a very loyal and sticky customer base that's going to be essentially highly retained and very difficult to disrupt by your competitors. Now, the whole concept of successful customer retention is really driven and owned by marketing being able to target the right type of customers who fit that criteria for a lead, successful leading indicator for retention and sales setting the tone and expectations with those customers. Now, the go-to market uh, model for this is essentially win at all costs. And win doesn't necessarily mean signing a contract or getting a sale. What it means is doing whatever you can to make sure you retain those customers because finding ways to improve that retention is gonna be key. And Mark Robert even indicates this. Uh, this is a, a nice example of a, of a customer retention uh, um, a slide that he thinks should go in front of the P&L when you present to either your board or to a venture capitalist when you're trying to raise money. Now the last piece that I want to focus on here is something that I see a lot of companies get wrong and I didn't realize until I read Mark's uh, ebook here is the type of sales hire that you make in these companies early on. Because um, most of the time when you hire a sales rep, and I see this all the time in medical devices, People want to hire the sales rep who was killing it at a very large company and they've, you know, they've won mess, uh, numerous president clubs. Those aren't the right salespeople because most often than not, those people come into a very established company with an established sales training program, established sales process. They're given a playbook and they just go out and sell. That's who, not who you need right now. The whole focus of the product market fit area, especially with customer retention, is maximizing learning. So when it comes to maximizing learning, you need a salesperson who's going to you know, be both account executive in terms of helping the customer success team get that customer set up 
and managed and more importantly retained and also a product manager in the sense that they'll be able to pay very close attention to not only the sales and marketing processes, but also the process in terms of how the product is used and provide that feedback to the product team. So that is your book of the week. Like I said, I'm leaving a link below, uh, not only to the ebook, but I also did a podcast interview with Mark, a uh, really great interview that we talked a little bit about this uh, and a few other things when it comes to his strategies. So check it out. You can listen to the podcast or watch it on YouTube. So as always, happy Wisdom Wednesday. Great to be back. Hope you have a great week. And as always, I'll see you next week. Bye for now.